Ty Norris leaves Trackhouse, Nick Sanchez is headed to the Xfinity Series, and Bubba Wall signs an extension with 2311 Racing. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. I still have an abundance of these Johnny Benson Roush Racing number 26 plush toys, as well as about 100 of these uh, John Andretti Petty Enterprise number 43 Pontiac Grand Prix. So um, if you guys have a good idea on what I should do with these, let me know. My plan right now is probably to give them away um, either at a racetrack or do some giveaways on here. Either way, I bought way more than I thought were actually coming with this when I won this auction. And before we move on, remember that there is now a Break Hard blog link is in the description below trying to post a you know a weekend preview as well as a recap and probably something during the week and also remember head over to driven sunglasses.com today use code break hard at checkout for 20 percent off plus free shipping now for today's news ty norris the president of track house has left the team left the organization on amicable terms according to jordan bianchi from the athletic he reported that on tuesday afternoon a possible landing spot for ty norris appears to be called racing according to jordan as bob pockers noted uh, in Trackhouse's uh, weekly pre-race reports that they send out, Ty Norris's name was not mentioned as it had been in previous weeks this year. So it does appear that the split has already happened. And now we'll wait to see where he lands at. The good news, if he does land over at Colleg Racing, they don't have any old DEI numbers over at Colleg. So he doesn't have to worry about Teresa Earnhardt renewing <laughs> old trademarks so that they can't do anything with that number like she did with the number one. And Trackhouse still can't do anything with that. But for Colleg Racing, landing Ty Norris would be a big time get for them. Does that mean that President Chris Rice is out from what I've heard? He is not. So what would Ty Norris be doing over there? Well, Ty's entire career has kind of been built on building organizations. I mean, he was at DEI, Michael Waltrip Racing. He was at Spire. He was at Trackhouse. And now he might be going over to Colleg. And it makes a lot of sense if Colleg is trying to grow their cup program into being an actual contender. Now for the 2025 season, they have AJ Allmendinger signed to the 16. It is expected that Ty Dillon will likely end up in the number 31. And maybe Ty Norris was like, listen, I can't allow this Ty Dillon stuff to happen. That's why he went over to Colleg. He's like, I'm going to have to fix this. This shop's only big enough for one Ty. We're not having Ty Dillon come in here, although it does appear that he will be there next year. Listen, there's nothing wrong with Ty Dillon. He's just not a guy that you can probably build a program around. He's a guy that's going to bring home the equipment pretty safely. He's going to be rather mid for you, probably more mid than Eric Amarola was, but he's not going to wreck a ton of equipment. There's nothing controversial about him. He's very much white bread, and maybe that's what they're hoping for. And he's going to bring a decent bit of budget from what I've heard as well. So for Ty Norris to no longer be at Trackhouse, that's an interesting thing as well, because it's a weird time to make that jump considering Trackhouse is expanding in 2024. Five and Ty Norris, like I said, has kind of built his career on helping build these teams up. I mean, he built Michael Waltrip Racing from scratch and turned them into le you know, legit championship contender. I mean, they did have an opportunity there to at least be in the hunt with Clint Boyer um, before that team absolutely imploded. And now with Trackhouse, he's turned them into uh, yearly race winners. I wouldn't say that they're a championship contending team just yet, but under his guidance, it's been pretty good. So having him over at Colleg, could make a lot of sense. And maybe like a Matt Collig is stepping back and allowing like Chris Rice and Ty Norris to run the deal. Maybe Chris Rice will run the Xfinity side, Ty Norris will run the Cup side. Who knows at this point? But honestly, they have a, a pretty good front office over there at Collig now if they do in fact add Ty Norris. And it'll be interesting to see the direction that they go. Moving on to the Xfinity news of the day, Nick Sanchez will be headed to the NASCAR Xfinity Series in 2025, driving the number 48 car for Big Machine Racing, which you already knew because you watched the YouTube channel, you follow me on TikTok, or you follow me on X, and I broke this news a week ago. Sorry to Captain Kyle out there who was questioning where my information was coming from, telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. Turns out I do, um, so sucks to be him in this moment. But for Nick Sanchez, it is a great landing spot, as we talked about last week. He raced for the team in 2022, completing five races, scored a top 10 finish at Martinsville. He has two truck wins this year. He's fourth in the standings. He's contending for a NASCAR Truck Series championship. He has a lot of speed. I think maybe working on consistency a little bit more would be good for him, but overall, Kids bring a lot of speed. The Xfinity Series is going to be stacked out next year in terms of uh, Rookie of the Year. You're going to have Connor Zilich. You're going to have Nick Sanchez, Daniel Dye, Christian Eckes, um, probably William Sawalich. 
probably Taylor Gray from the sounds of it. So you're getting a pretty stout rookie class in the Xfinity series combined with the Xfinity regulars that will still be there. Sean Creed, Sam Mayer, Justin Allgaier, or Sammy Smith, um, whoever else ends up over at Junior Motorsports. If Hendrick potentially fields one of their cars on a part time basis, there's going to be more stout people over there. I'm just saying things have been talked about. Um, uh, around certain programs, which we'll have to try to gather more information on before we talk fully about those. But Sanchez going over there, like I said, made a lot of sense when Parker Kligerman decided to not uh, pursue full-time racing in 2025. Uh, Sanchez's name had been linked to that ride for quite some time. So happy to see all of that confirmed. Happy to still be undefeated in a uh, silly season uh, talk so far this year. Moving on to the Cup Series news of the day, and that is Bubba Wallace has re-signed with 2311 Racing on a multi-year extension. How long is that multi-year extension? Two years by the sounds of it, according to Jordan Bianchi. So it is technically multi-year deal. It will keep him in that seat through the 2026 season. What happens after that? Uh, it remains to be seen. Corey Heim, of course, is a guy that 2311 Racing would love to get in a car, but doesn't have a spot for him now. Corey Heim would love to get out of the truck series, but he might go full ARCA on the truck series next year unless somebody hops into that 19 truck, uh, which Zane's name has maybe floated around that truck a little bit more if he doesn't get things worked out over at Front Row Motorsports. So uh, that might be the only saving grace for the truck series next year, because if there's nobody else down there to compete against Corey Heim, he is about to run rampant in that truck series. But for Bubba Wallace, a two year extension is great for him. Now, there's a lot of people out here that are like, you know, the NASCAR fans that are the get Bubba out of the sport crowd. Um, he's continues to live rent free in their heads. Completely understand that, but they also just don't understand the economics of the sport and the amount of money that Bubba Wallace brings to that team. It makes a lot of sense why they re-signed him because he's a super marketable driver and part of just being competitive on track is also being marketable in a lot of situations and he's a guy that's bringing money into the team. They are not about to drop him to put Kyle Busch in the car because Kyle Busch is still under contract over at RCR. I know people don't understand that, but like they would have to buy out the contract for Kyle Busch, and that's just not happening. Bubba Wallace is a race winner, a multi-race winner. He's a guy that can contend for a playoff spot. He's a guy that can advance in the playoffs as well. Do they need to make changes on the 23 car? I think it's worth a discussion. I like Booty Barker a lot, but when you look at the performance of the 45 compared to the performance of the 23, there's something missing right there. And Bubba is certainly a guy that knows how to find victory lane. He's been able to do that in the Cup Series. Now they just need to make sure that they start the season stronger at the beginning and not wait until the summer before they start to turn it on and then have to make that late season push to get into the uh, playoffs. It's just too stressful. And and if you can start, you know, knocking down these top fives, potentially get a win early in the year, oh man, it makes your rest of the regular season so much nicer. So for Bubba, uh, makes sense why he re-signed 2311 Racing, of course, doesn't have a charter agreement in place for next year. So Bubba had talked last week about like, you know, this whole charter negotiation thing is holding up my uh, my deal over here. Obviously, that has been changed now. And we wait to find out what's going to happen with 2311 Racing on the charter side of things. Will they be racing as open cars next year? Will they lose their charters? Will they come to an agreement with NASCAR? Will they ultimately just give in and sign up to what the other, you know, 13 of the 15 teams did? All that remains up in the air. Denny Hamlin said this week, he's not really sure what direction they go now, which is, I don't necessarily know if that's the answer <laughs> out there, but um, yeah, I guess he's as confused on maybe the future of this as the rest of us are and sort of what the end goal is here uh because i don't really see a path to the victory that they're looking for and more so you know it seems like nascar is going to get what they want out of this but for Bubba Wallace, he signed for at least two more years through the 2026 season. Uh, so expect to see Tyler Reddick, Bubba Wallace, and Riley Herbst over at 2311 Racing in 2025, plus probably Martin Truex Jr. fielded as a fourth uh, car, an open car for the Daytona 500 as well with Cole Pern on top of the box. So let me know in the comments what you think about Ty Norris leaving Trackhouse, Nick Sanchez signing with Big Machine Racing in the Xfinity Series for next year, and Bubba Wallace ex extension. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.